Welcome back. I'm Dr. Ross Kopelman. I'm Dr. Joel Kopelman. And we're really excited to have you back today because we want to talk to you about five essential blood tests that we really think you need to do when you're thinking about treating your hair loss. I think it's a great idea because sometimes we discover things uh, on the blood test that reveal underlying medical problems uh, that can be easily treated and can help to restore some of your hair problems. Okay, so let's dive into it together today. The first blood test that we think is important is vitamin D3. And vitamin D3 plays a crucial role in the formation of hair follicles. Right, and it also moves the hair follicle cycle, the growth cycle, where it's, the hair is in a resting phase into a uh, growth phase uh, more rapidly. And it's also anti-inflammatory, so it, it has multiple uh, potential mechanisms to stimulate hair growth, but we're not exactly sure how it works. Nobody knows exactly how D3 has an influence on hair growth. And if you live in an environment where you really don't get exposure to sun, because sun is important to activate vitamin D uh, into, it, into its active form, you might be someone who's deficient in vitamin D. So that's something just to keep in mind, top of mind, when you go for a blood test. Right. So we're looking for deficiencies of vitamin D. That's what we're looking and for. It's, clearly very important in terms of addressing hair growth right. and, and it might be one of the and, reasons and why. Simple to, it's simple to, to fix. You know, we can just give you D, uh, extra D. Correct. And, you can uh, take a vitamin, a pill. It's, it's super simple to, to, to address it that way. So the next blood test that we think is very important is actually looking at your vitamin B12 levels. Now, people tend to be low in vitamin B12, especially if they're a vegetarian because B12 comes from meats and fish and milk. And also sometimes people have malabsorption syndromes of their GI tract and they don't get uh, absorption of B12 uh, easily. So surprisingly, we've noticed quite a few people when we tested them, they have low B12 levels. And this is a contributing factor to uh, why they have some hair loss. And B12 is important because, number one, it's important for forming red blood cells. Red blood cells bring oxygen, and oxygen is important for hair growth. Right. It's also important to have B12 just in DNA synthesis, the creation of the hair follicles. So if you're low in B12, this could be another contributor for why you potentially are experiencing hair loss. And again, if you're vegetarian, something to really keep top of mind Right. You might need some supplements of some kind that can fit in with your diet. I do recall that uh, on a monthly basis I get B12 shots. That's another way to potentially get B12 into your system if you're someone who cannot eat red meat, fish, and eggs. We know hair follicles have a very high oxygen demand for growth of the hair. This oxygen is delivered through the red blood cells which contain an iron molecule. Iron in our body is stored, however, in what's called ferritin, and sometimes people are deficient in ferritin. And sometimes that ferritin leads to iron deficiency anemia. Correct, iron deficiency anemia. And that's why it's important to eat foods that are high in iron, like spinach, meat, fortified cereals. You need iron because you need to deliver oxygen to the hair follicles for hair growth. What you're starting to appreciate is that by taking a blood test, you can find underlying issues for what's causing your hair loss. And that are treatable. Correct. Yeah. So another test that we have to point out is the thyroid test. We want to know, do you have a hyper or hypothyroid issue? Because this can be a contributor to why you're having hair loss. Right. And it's very common in women. Right, and we do this, uh, we do a T3, T4, and TSH levels in your blood, and that way we can see if they're uh, overactive or underactive, uh, and, and those, those issues can be easily uh, addressed with a, a medication, uh, and that will help stimulate your hair growth. Correct, and sometimes you have to involve an endocrinologist right. to address this underlying issue. 
but we see this commonly in our office where we have patients come in, we, they don't even know that they have a thyroid issue. We do the blood test and then we recognize their T3 and T4 and TSH levels are potentially off. Right, and then we would refer to an endocrinologist for further evaluation. The last blood test that we recommend is called e, uh, ESR or sedimentation rate. And that determines generally whether or not you have inflammation in the body. If it's high, then there, we have to suspect that there's some other underlying inflammation going on. And sometimes we can identify the source of that inflammation and address it. And that may be a help in terms of regrowing your hair. And this is a test that, by the way, most physicians don't necessarily test for, but we find that we can identify potentially inflammation issues by adding ESR to the test. Right. It's kind of nonspecific, but we want to, uh, it gives us kind of a, a red flag that there's something else going on. All of these blood tests are important because it gives us an idea of whether you have an underlying medical issue. And these issues likely can be addressed once identified. So that's why you have to keep these blood tests in mind when you're thinking about addressing your hair loss. If you have any further questions regarding what kind of blood test that you should have performed to evaluate your hair loss, please leave them below. We're more than happy to respond to the questions. And maybe you have some ideas that we don't have. So we'll be looking out for your suggestions. Okay, so that's, that's it, it's a wrap. Um, and really, you know, we're here really to help you along in your hair journey. So stay tuned.